Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Today I'm going to take you along as I do a, a job that I've got lined up. This is going to be some fairly quick burns. Uh, one of the markets that I kind of got into in my area is weddings. And the reason is, is a lot of people like to have custom items at their weddings. Uh, there's anything you can think of from, you know, signs to, to telling them where to sit, uh, reserved, place cards, whatever. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you can do. One of the most popular things that I have found with weddings tends to be the clothes hangers for the members of the party's uh, clothing, whether it be the bride, uh, the groomsmen, the bridesmaids, whatever the case may be. Uh, that seems to be a pretty, you know, little nice little niche that you can get into, and it's relatively easy. Now, I've made myself a jig to use to do them so that it makes it relatively easy and quick to turn those guys out. And so today what I'm going to be doing is I've got several of the uh, clothes hangers here that I've got engraved and I'm going to just kind of show you the process and the tools that I use and how I incorporate my jig kit into it and show you the results. Uh, so before I started the video, I went ahead and uh, got one of them done just so that I could kind of show you guys in the beginning what the process is going to look like in the end. So this is the one that I have started off with and this is the one that... I basically have been texting with the customer and worked out the fonts and the way it's laid out, send her pictures of my screen just in the preview mode, and then I go ahead and, and burn the first one out before I get carried away and do the rest and make sure I get approval on the font, the placement, and everything, uh, and then go from there. So if you want to see how these are made, uh, stick around. This is an easy project. Uh, usually with these guys right here, that little burn right there, I charge anywhere from 5 to $10 a pop, depending on how many of them I'm doing. And of course, uh, whether it's a relative, friend, or whatever, because this is my hobby, guys. Uh, I'm going to be basically making these and working on other projects at the same time, normally. Now, today we're going to be doing a video, so I'm going to be talking to you guys. So I'm going to spend a little more time doing these, but I want to kind of put this out there and show you the approach that I use to get consistent results with these things and turn a decent profit and not have to buy a whole lot of clothes hangers because these are tricky to get squared up okay so stick around and we'll go through the process all right guys so here's how i got it laid out all right my jig is basically a circle I took a square rotated at 45 degrees and then take and cut the corner node out in light burn which leaves me with basically a triangle then the easiest way for me it's time saving is if this thing needs any adjustments what you would do is get your clothes hanger in here get it lined up to where you want it get it exactly square use a pencil and mark this board here and if there's any material that needs to be taken off of it, you can use a jigsaw, a bandsaw, a handsaw, or if you're using thin enough material, you could just use a uh, X-Acto knife or some type of a razor knife and just trim that down to make it fit. Uh, also, on these clothes hangers, they have these little they have these little notches right here, and so I have timing marks on my jig here, so that when I lay this guy in here like this. The, the, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these shoulders right here are firmly up against these two little notches. And then I'm just going to make sure down here at the bottom that my little lines that I have on my jig line up with the hole in the clothes hanger. And in doing so, that lets me know that this thing is square and it's where I need it to be for the file that I have built. The file that I have built... And I'll just show you real quick. I'm going to frame the area that I've got set up to engrave. And it's a very small area, but it's the only usable space that I have. So there you go. The one thing that you have to be aware of with these clothes, with these clothes hangers is, is because of that rounded shoulder right there on either side, you are going to lose a little bit of your engrave area. Typically, most letters aren't, that's not going to be a problem. But if you start trying to stretch these letters too wide, you can actually go off of your material with some of the lettering. So you always want to, you know, frame the complete burn, the artwork 
before you send it, just to make sure you're not gonna be going off on the sides over here. So that's the way I got them set up. And it's as simple as, change. it takes me longer to change the graphic than it does to set up the next clothes hanger. And that's why I like using jigs, like using my jig kit. I save this file and all I've gotta do is open this file Put the clothes hanger up here. Some of them are shaped differently. The best ones for engraving, guys, if you're going to do them, is get these flat ones. These flat ones are the best. The ones that are curved, those add another third dimension to trying to get everything lined up, and I just don't like those. But these are flat. These are wooden. They're not all that expensive. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, I'll drop a link down below so that you can find them. But they work well with this setup. You could, and I could have if I wanted to take the time, made this entire jig and laser cut it and made it to where these things would fit up in there perfectly. But then if I get another clothes hanger that's a different size, then I've got to go through that whole process again. And the less time that I have to invest into doing these, the cheaper I can do them and still make a profit. Because even at $5 a piece, $10 a piece, you know, I've got eight or so of them over here to do. It's, it's, it'd be a decent little job, especially you can burn these while you're doing something else. So, let me get over here and I've got to consult with my text message from the customer to determine what the next graphic is going to be, but I'm going to get that set up and get it ready to run. All right, guys, so I've got the next <clears throat> graphic made and what I'm having to do is I'm having to make the font in another program uh, and bring it in and trace the font because, of course, Lightburn doesn't offer any calligraphy fonts and that's what they wanted on this one. So I got a little trick that I use using the Cricut software to generate those and bring them over and bring them in. So that's a, that's a whole other video. But uh, the thing that I do want to mention, too, is whenever you figure out what size letter and you want to use, uh, some names are going to be shorter, some names are going to be longer. Uh, you will have to uh, lengthen and you know smaller the font on some of the lettering in order to keep them all to where you can you can read them and kind of fill up the workspace uh, because if you put like a five name a five letter name in there and then the next one's a ten letter name of course it's going to take up more size more space so you may have to decrease the size of the font but generally speaking I try to make sure that the height of the font stays the same when possible like I said there's going to be times that you're not going to be able to so when I bring these graphics in I'm trying to keep them all at relatively the same height but a lot of times you have to take into consideration when you're not using you can't use the uh, font size because I'm bringing this in as an image so what I'm getting is I'm actually getting the overall size of the burn because you can get into overlap if you're not careful if you have a name that doesn't have any low hanging characters or you know really high characters and you bring it in at the same height it's technically going to be a different size so what I'm trying to do is I just try to stay close to the same uh, and more or less fit it into the work area. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so this name that I brought in now, unlike the first one, which was Rachel, this, this name has a Y in it. So that Y is going to hang lower than what the name Rachel would because it does have those low-hanging characters. So I'm actually going to have to kind of oversize this one just a little bit. But what I'm trying to do is I just want to stay in my work area. I don't want to get out of it. I don't want it hanging off of the, the sides. So I'm just going to increase the size on it and I'm going to go ahead and frame. And this is going to be, this frame is only going to show where the burn is going. This is not my tool line that I have built to use to uh, center all of this. This is just the burn itself. So let me go ahead and frame that. And as you can see, I'm a little high on that top left corner there. So I'm going to bring that back down. You want to be careful. And, and guys, you can't frame too much on this stuff, in my opinion. Because uh, you only get one shot at it. Once you burn it on there, it's there. I have sanded some of these down and refinished them, but that's a pain. All right, so let's go ahead and let's frame again. All right, so my top left corner, looking at my graphic, both of my corners, my top left and my top right corner of my graphic, are kind of, they're, they're low in the graphic, in the design. So when this thing frames, uh, it's gonna frame that square. And so even though the square is right on the edge of the, of the material now, looking at this frame that I'm framing, it's, it's not gonna be anywhere near that corner. So I think this is gonna be a good size. It's gonna fit on my workspace and should go well. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and lower this. I'm turning on just enough air to have positive pressure in my nozzle. 
or I'm not running high air on this. It's going to be just enough to keep that smoke and because this, these things do have a finish on them and I don't want that stuff getting on the uh, top of my laser on the lens. So I'm going to turn the, just enough air on to prevent that and we're going to go ahead and burn this one. Let me double check before I do. And like I said, guys, <laughs> double check, triple check, whatever you need to do. So I'm just going to double make sure that all my graphics are centered in my frame. They appear to be. And so here we go. The text at the bottom where it says the, the title in the wedding, that's going to be the same size as it was on the last one. I did have to do a little bit of a resize on the fonts for the name because of the workspace. And like I said, there's some variables in the font. The Y on Molly is going to come down and slightly intersect the N on uh, the Maid of Honor. But that's just a necessary evil with this situation. Because if I don't, if I go too high, it's going to be off the workspace. If I make it any smaller, it's, it's not going to be that readable. So occasionally you do have to make compromises, but I'll probably be the only one that even notices it. And it just kind of adds a little more uh, detail to it, I guess. So I'm going to let this burn. Now these, Like I said, these aren't very long burns. The lining up and orienting them and designing the graphic is, takes way longer than the burn itself. Uh, I am running these at 100% power, 100 speed on the 20 watt X Tool D1. And I also have turned the LPI up to 254 because this is a small text and I want as much detail as I can in the small text so that it doesn't show the lines. All right, so there it is. Uh, you're gonna get a little bit of a uh, little bit of smoky residue, uh, and the reason is is because these were finished before I got them. Uh, I use my regular glass cleaner spray that I use on everything else, and just slightly spray it, wipe it down with a rag, it comes right off. And that's what it looks like once you wipe it with the uh, glass cleaner. Like I said, this is this is what <laughs> this is what I get, and I started using this stuff to clean engraves because I had it in my truck. And to be honest with you, I keep going back and getting more of it because it, it, it works. It doesn't dry it out really bad. And uh, it, it looks nice when you get the stuff off of there. So got that one done, moving on. One more thing that I will say about these flat clothes hangers. One thing that you're gonna wanna do before you engrave them, inspect both sides if there's a knot or any kind of blemish in these things because these are you know mass manufactured you may want to use one side or the other. This one is pretty much the same on both sides, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and place this one and move forward. Like I said, pushing it up until these little points catch the shoulder on it. And then all I do from there is kind of rotate it ever so slightly to get what well, this one's a little inconsistent with the others uh, as far as the size. That's no good. So I'm gonna get this one in here. I'm gonna eyeball it best I can. Uh, go ahead, I'm gonna frame my outer frame just to make sure that that's the only difference in this one. Okay, so if I frame, now I'm gonna frame the graphic itself that I did on the last one just to see where this one runs. Okay. It's, it's fairly close. Uh, the curvature here is slightly different than the last couple that I've done. So, but apparently it's not gonna be an issue. So I'm gonna be redesigning the graphic. Uh, the next one that I have is going to be, consult my list here, uh, Zoe, Maid of Honor. So I've got two Maids of Honor. All right, so I just need to change the graphic to Zoe, and this is gonna be a really short name, so that's great. All right, guys, I got the next one laid out, and it's ready to go, so I'm just gonna go through the framing again. I am not gonna make y'all watch me do all of these. I just wanted to do a couple to kind of give you the idea of how easy it is. Once you get a jig made, once you get everything laid out, save the jig file to your computer so that you'll know to use that file with uh, 
this panel. And once you get that done, it makes life a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do now is just once again, I'm gonna frame the outer, the outer frame, which is my tool line, and just show you where it's running. Okay, that's the tool line. And I'm actually gonna move this, uh, move some of my text up a little. All right. Now I'm gonna frame the, this is the actual engrave. This is where the burn is gonna go. Now, with this, with this square, you've gotta remember, that this side of the square is going up based on the maid of honor, not the name. The, the way this is gonna draw the framing squares based on the furthest reaches of the design, it's gonna create a square over that. So with this shorter name, even though it's showing that the corner is gonna go off the edge of the material, in reality it is not because that, is, that line is on the plane of where the M in maid of honor is. So everything looks good. And we're gonna go ahead and send that one. I am running my exhaust because this stuff, it, it, it does generate uh, some smoke. I only have just enough air assist on to basically just cause positive pressure inside the cone to keep any kind of, uh, any kind of chemicals or anything off of this finish that's on this clothes hanger from going up in there and sitting on that lens. So not running a lot of air, but I am running some just to keep my machine clean. Uh, like I said, these machines make me a little bit of money and the last thing I need is for my machine going down because I didn't do proper maintenance or didn't keep it clean. So I try to you know, do stuff like this to, to make sure that it stays clean. said with the 20 watt 100 and 100 has pretty much been my go-to for any kind of woods just doing engraving as long as I'm not trying to go deep and I've had really good luck with it guys uh, I do have the LPI ran up to 254 on these because like I said it's a small text and I don't want to see those little lines so there's that one before cleaning and I'm gonna step over here hit it with a little bit of my cleaner and see, I just basically just spray the guy and then take the rag and wipe it off. And voila, it gets it off. So as you can see, I'm gonna try to get that in there really close. You can't see the engraved lines. With 254 on wood, it makes really, really clean edges. Uh, so there's no lines. You don't see that, that that it's just constant, you know, back and forth with lines. I did just clean my machine. I cleaned the lens. Uh, cleaned all the rails and everything before I started this job because it was a little dusty in there and uh, needed, a, needed a good cleaning. But that's three down. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them, guys. And once I get the rest of them done, I'll kind of go back and go over anything that I might have missed and try to show you what the end product looks like. All right, I found a clothes hanger to use to uh, show you what I was talking about earlier. All right, look at this guy. See these little veins of like heartwood or whatever that's in here, okay? That's not gonna burn the same as the wood around it. So I do not want, if I can avoid it, I don't want that to be part of my engraved surface. But if you flip this guy over, the other side is, is clean where I want the burn to go. So when you're placing your materials, especially with these things, always watch for that and pick the side that best suits your engrave. Just a little tip for today. All right, guys, uh, got them all done, and here they are. Uh, it turned out really nice. Like I said, you can, you can kind of see uh, each one, I guess. Uh, but that's, uh, that's some pretty uh, decent money if you start figuring up. This is just the bride side of the wedding with a total of nine engraves. So even if you're doing these things for 10 bucks a piece, you know, that's $90. And it, it's, it's really easy work. And for those of you that are basically just trying to make a little money out of your hobby to pay for your gear, uh, it's a win, especially you get three or four sets of these going or you know you do them on a regular basis. 
Uh, but if you're like me and you like using jigs, uh, go ahead and take the time when you do the first one, build the jig, get the jig set up right, build the file that goes with that jig. And like I've always said, uh, scribe something on the jig panel itself and then use that as the name of the file that goes with it. That way, when you go to pull that panel down and you're going to use it to do them uh, and you look on it, you know if you just go through your files and locate that file, then you'll be able to turn these out. And this jig, like I said, this is probably the third or fourth set of these I've done using this particular jig setup. It's really easy and um, as far as getting them lined up now, once I put in the work, the initial building of the jig does take a little time, but I promise you what it takes in time to set up, it makes for once you start trying to do nine of these. But the, the confidence of knowing that this is exactly where this burn is going to go, as if you would if you used a jig, because you may have one skewed one way, one the other. Uh, and the thing that you want is consistency. And that's a big thing that I try to get out of my machines is consistency from piece to piece to piece to piece. And as you can see, I tried getting these things. I tried getting them where I could hold them all and you can see them, but that's been a bit of a challenge. That's, that's gonna be it for today. I got that little job knocked out. Uh, luckily, it didn't take too long. I've got a couple more things I'm gonna work on before I get ready for my live tonight. And if you're not tuning in Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Central, myself and Steve from over at Ventari's workshop do our live. Uh, we have laser discussions and just people bringing up topics. And sometimes we just sit around talking about the weather. But the more people are there, the more content you guys bring, the more we have to discuss. So if you haven't already, add that to your calendar and check it out. But I hope this helps, guys. I try to share a lot of the projects and a lot of the things that I do that makes a little revenue that helps pay the bills, keeps the lights on here at the Clack Shack. And that's one of the, uh, one of the easier, more consistent uh, things is going to be stuff involving weddings. And now that we're coming into spring, getting into summer, and maybe all the way into fall, it is kind of wedding season. So if there's any wedding venues in your area, uh, you know, places that people go to buy stuff for weddings, you may want to, you know, check with them. I started out using Facebook just as my marketing, and now I've done enough of them that when people are planning their weddings, they see pictures on other people's weddings and they're like, hey, where did you get those? And so it, it, it kind of ends up, I get a little residual uh, income off of the jobs that I've done in the past. And once you get your foot into the market, you know, word gets out. Uh, it's, a, it, it's, it's a very viable uh, source of income to help you know recoup some of your expenses for your hobby so i hope this kind of stuff helps guys if you want more of it or need other ideas i got plenty of other videos and i try to come out with new content and show new things i try to avoid some of the stuff that everybody else is doing and try to do my own thing and just show you guys projects that you can make money with if that's something you're interested also be sure to hit that subscribe button down below you can hit the bell get the notifications because Anytime I can come up with an idea to share with you that can make you a little money, I will be doing so. But thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, be safe and have a good day.